Morning, everybody. Welcome to the Rauher Flats. Not really appropriately named because we're about to go up a mountain. The flats are down here at the bottom. Uh, this is the 2021 Toyota Land Cruiser. Uh, for now, and as best we know, the end of the Land Cruisers. The la this is like the last press car, um, and it's got 7,800 miles on it, so it's, it's really the last press car. Um, the Land Cruiser has been soldiering on, and it's really an appropriate use of that term, for like 50 years and change. Um, and it has always had a, a mission, um, started from a, a military vehicle, moved towards a civilian luxury vehicle in the 80s and 90s. And ever since then, it's been known for quiet, unpretentious durability. Durability is the view. These things are like indestructible. The end of the world, it's just going to be the cockroaches and land cruisers. Um, this one hasn't really been changed that much in a couple of years. The only new thing for 2021 is actually the folding third row of seats. But I have never once reviewed a Toyota Land Cruiser, and so I thought I need to have the chance to do this while I can. Uh, the Land Cruiser has a 5.7 liter V8, old school, NA. Uh, 381 horsepower, 400 pound-feet of torque. Uh, it has a 4x4, a two-speed transfer case, a locking center differential, um, and it has uh, independent front suspension, solid axle rear suspension. Uh, it has a bunch of techie off-roading things like hill descent control and ascent control. It has this thing that tightens your turning radius by locking the inside rear wheels. Um, it also has a fully electronically uh, controllable four-wheel drive system, but it doesn't have two-wheel drive. It's full-time 4x4 with uh, low range. Techie speaking in the system, not so much on the road. Your standards, dual zone climate control, your standard safety features. I love that it's got an analog gauge cluster. I like that it's got big knobs for stuff. And it feels like a slightly older school car that's that's being built today. It does feel like the quality is, is really, really there. Uh, our tires are 18-inch Dunlop Grand Trek uh, all-season slash off-road tires. Big brakes, 14-inch front brakes, 13-inch 13.6 inch rear brakes, zero to 60 and seven flat, the quarter mile and 15.4. So it's not fast, but 87 grand and 5,851 pounds, it ain't slow either. Uh, it comes in two versions, base or heritage. This is the base one. Heritage gives you some options all packaged together as well as some cool wheels and a cool grill. Uh, you can tow 8,100 pounds with this, which is not quite as much as some other vehicles, but still a ton. You're talking about an enclosed race hauler at that point or a boat, and that's totally usable uh, towing capacity. It's honestly like this thing, it just, it feels like it's going to be here at the end of time. So we're going to take a sip of our water and we're going to head up this trail. Guys, does it sometimes feel like the weight of credit card debt is bogging you down? When we started the Smung Tire, I ran the business on credit cards, and those first couple of months were iffy. I know how it feels. But Upstart is here, and they can help lift that weight off your shoulders. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple, fixed monthly payment. Unlike other lenders, Upstart looks at more than just your credit score, like your income and your employment history. This means they can offer smarter rates with trusted partners. With just a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate up front for loans between $1,000 and $50,000, and you can get those funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loans. You can find out how Upstart can help you get out from under that mountain of credit card debt in just five minutes if you go to upstart.com slash TST. The link is in the video description, but you can also just remember upstart.com slash TST. And thank you to Upstart for sponsoring today's video. Honestly, I'm not even going to start in, uh, in any real special modes. I'm going to turn traction control off, but I'm not going to use low range. I'm not even going to use the manual gearbox at first. We're just in regular old 4x4. About this trail, 
this is called the Pioneer Trail at Rower Flats. Um, although it is not the most difficult trail I could possibly do, uh, it is the trail that I think represents about the most difficult thing that most people would do in a stock SUV, okay? So yes, there are harder trails, and yes, if I wanted to get stuck or if I wanted to break something, I could go find one. Instead, what we've done is equalized. I bring every SUV up this trail, and so bringing this one is an equalizer, just like uh, Top Gear uses Dunsfold, which I might add is a terrible racetrack, not the hardest racetrack they could be using. They could be at the Nürburgring, but they're not. So far, um, very easy, very little input required. I have not adjusted tire pressures at all. We are running the factory street pressure, which is a 40 PSI uh, all around. This beginning section here is a little trickier than it looks. Um, it's steep. It's got some big holes in it. You have to actually kind of straddle a big hole. Uh, and it looks like that hole may have gotten worse since I was last up here. Uh, and it, it, this one is a challenge. In a lot of vehicles, I would really recommend low range here. But in this, so here we go, eight speed automatic. So I really was able to just smash it in first gear. Uh, and it did the thing. It went right up. That was excellent. We all know that the Land Cruiser is good at going off-road. I'm not here to try and disprove that. I'm just here to experience it for myself. My limit to Land Cruisers is street miles. When I was growing up in Jewy-ass Westchester, New York, it was Jeep Grand Cherokees and, Land, and Tahoes and Land Cruisers. That's what everybody's mom was driving. So a lot, of, a lot of my friends' parents had these things in the late night, in the 90s, into the 2000s. And it's just, it's like the 911 where it's a very slow evolution of a type of vehicle. Um, and, and this one doesn't, doesn't feel all that much different from the, the late 90s and, uh, and early 2000s. It's really, it's just holding 1500 RPM, just billy goating up this thing. You know, what's great about the Land Cruiser is it's, it's, it's not trying to be anything it isn't. They haven't done some crazy thing to make it feel like a sports car on the street. It has really old school, heavy hydraulic steering. It feels really trucky. Uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't handle very well at all. Uh, it really rolls, out, rolls and gets annoyed when you try and do anything. Um, pushing its limits on the street, but is it is a comfortable, comfortable truck. You stick this thing at 85 on the freeway. I'm going to go right up the middle here, toughest, toughest section uh, here. Still not that tough, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to take the easy parts today. If I was in a Range Rover Velar or a Honda Pilot, I might take the easy line. Uh, G wagon, Defender, Land Cruiser is going to be the hard line. It doesn't feel like it needs the low range right here. It's definitely getting up it without too much trouble, but I do feel like I want to put it in low range in order to just imp like improve it. It, fe it doesn't feel like it's optimized. So we're putting, let's see, we will, where's the button for you? Oh, there we go. Push L4. We are now in four low. Do you stop beeping? Oh, do I have to go neutral? Four low engaged. Okay, you did have to go to neutral. Sorry there. That one I did on the fly. First time doing it. Okay, so again, we are not going to go up uh, the easy line here. We're going to go up the hard line. And this is really going to show our approach angles because these are big, big rocks and boulders we're crawling over. I'm just maintaining a real nice, easy 15% throttle and holding a constant wheel. It's fabulous. And I really like the motion of the body on this stuff because they really haven't tried to make it sporty at all. It's, um, 
it, it absorbs a lot of the motions of the suspension for you. It's cushy. That's good. Can't see anything. Oh, but I have my front camera. I have a front camera showing me what to look for right there. It's not a big screen. It's small. Uh, but and, and with these glasses, it's, it's challenging to see. But, but there is a front camera. And there's also side cameras uh, looking down at the side of the trail. I'm by myself today. I don't know if you've noticed that. I don't have Zach. He's off filming Proving Grounds for NBC Sports or wherever it's at now. But I'm by myself, so we're a little light on the drive-bys, a little light on the B-roll, and of course we are missing Zach's company and expertise, which are always welcome. But sometimes we got to do what we got to do, and it's like 99 degrees outside, so you'll forgive me if I don't want to climb mountains to get B-roll today. Okay, little tougher section here. I'm going to make it as hard as it can be by going up the hard line. That's going to be left to right. So we've got big boulders combined with loose softball sized boulders. And then we're going to go up this sort of loose side here. These are sharp rocks. Uh, oh, and we've got some, some swales. This may be, I may have a wheel in the air right there. You. Oh no. Park assist. Oh, have I actually gotten stuck? I think I've actually gotten stuck. Okay. Should we try again? How do I, how do I make park assist go away? That's definitely not something we need. Park assist off. Okay. First gear. All right, let's go. Come on. Do it. Oh, let's see if I can pick up this left side and get some grip. Oh, no. Huh? No. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, okay. I've hit the limit. I'm in a hole that I can't get out of. And consequently, I'm going to go up the other side because I don't want to dig myself into a horrible situation right now. And I think that's pretty understandable, don't you? So we'll just drive over this berm. No high centering. And there, there we go. Okay, come on. Let's go. We'll go around, around that hole I couldn't get through. And we'll just go up this. Well, I, I, it's rare I find something I can't go up. I guess I, I push the limits. Oh, man, I still like it, though. It's still good. We can go up the middle here. This seems like... This, this section here is about, I think, what this, what this truck will be good at. Oh, wheel in the air. Come on. Yes. Smash throttle through there. Add power. That helped us get through it. And this, right, that line here is sort of medium tricky. And we're going to drive straight up this rock wall. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I mean, if all four wheels are on the ground, the traction is, is very good. And I know that sounds stupid to say, but I've brought trucks up here before that'll get up this, but it'll, it'll be all kinds of wheel spin. It'll be, you can feel the traction control just fighting every second of it. Right here, middle line is gonna be a little challenging. Whereas this, except for where I got stuck and just had no grip at all, this, it really feels like it's just holding, holding a contact patch, just evenly getting that power down and not scrambling everywhere for traction. That could be the tires, these Dunlop tires. That could be the traction control system. It could be the weight. It's a heavy vehicle. All the above. It's got 18s on it, which is the best. I mean, I didn't even really, I might have I should have dropped a couple pounds out of the tires rather than coming up this hill at 40. If I dropped them down to 25, I probably would have got through that hole where I got stuck. Um, but I like showing what these things are capable of out of the box with no, no changes, even though people might choose to make changes on their own time. You feel me? We're going to go right up the middle. 
Uh, not too tricky here, except that there's a, a, a rock wall. We're gonna drive up, right? Right, straight up the wall, can't see. Yeah, looking good. Some sections of this trail are admittedly not a challenge at all. They're just ridge running on a, on a bumpy dirt road. Admittedly, that's true. But, I mean, I did just find something I couldn't get up. So, you know, be what it be. One thing that's a little funky about this thing is, is for a vehicle that's as big as it is, uh, there's not a huge amount of room in the driver's seat. I really can't fully straighten out uh, my legs and my legs are not that long. There's also not a huge amount of room uh, behind me for a full-size SUV. Um, it's big, it's a big truck, but um, it, it, the way it's configured, it doesn't have a ton of leg room. And so that, uh-oh, there goes my coffee cup. Let's keep that, let's keep that from flopping about. That could cause a real problem if it rolls under your pedal. Up and over the rocks, that's a big sharp guy there. We don't wanna mess with that. Oh, speaking of which, I should probably just check and make sure that my camera is still there, which it is. Moving on. About halfway up the trail. These videos are longer. Hopefully you're using it as kind of a podcast or something. Maybe I'm just narrating as you get through your work workflow in your day. Um, there's a couple I can see. There's two more tough sections coming up we're about to get to. One thing I love about these, these vehicles, and, and, and I was told this about the Lexus version of it at the press launch a couple years ago. I have to assume it's true about the regular Land Cruiser as well. The, these trucks are, the reason they're so expensive compared to a, a Sequoia, right, is that the Land Cruiser and the, the Lexus truck are actually built stronger, meaning the projected life cycle of most vehicles is 10 years, whether we're talking about a Prius or whether we're talking about a Phantom. That's, that's really the expected life cycle. Um, Land Cruisers, the expected life cycle is 25 years. And so that is why a lot of the stuff that you don't necessarily see the not flashy stuff is overbuilt, um, extremely durable, and lasts a very long time. I mean, you get a you get a five year, sixty thousand mile powertrain warranty with this thing, which is which is great. Um, which you know you should be getting for a ninety thousand dollar vehicle, um, but it also you you don't always with certain other manufacturers, and it it's, it's a, it shows confidence in the product. Also, because there have never been any enormous drastic changes. Everything has been incremental. It's such a proven product. I mean, even though I have personally spent not a huge amount of time with driving Land Cruisers off-road, the, the people that are into them are so into them. And it's not one of those things like where it goes against common sense. They're into them because it is the most common sense vehicle. And when I say that, I mean it's the most common sense because the, the money you put in, you get a lot of it back. I mean, there's not a lot of cars out there that have resale value like a Land Cruiser. So it's, it's here we go, right up the middle. Expensive to buy in, but your resale value is so high that you probably will lose less over the price of your vehicle than you could lose over buying a less expensive um, and less well-made uh, thing. And of course, we do have to say that even though this thing's available as a Lexus, the Toyota one looks much better. It doesn't have the hideous grill. And it also, even though this multimedia system is way out of date, I would much rather use it than what Lexus is putting in their trucks. The build quality, the materials, the fit and finish of the Land Cruiser is on par with Lexus already. So you're really buying something that's virtually indistinguishable from Lexus quality. It just, it goes back to a time before Lexus ruined their grills. 
Uh, that did. That was very easy to get up. What could have been an intimidating but short section there. Oh, I might, I might have just bottomed out a little bit for for the for what I think is the first time there. I wouldn't necessarily like buy one of these for like pushing the limits of off roading, but like if I spent a lot of time on fire roads, or if I spent a lot of time in the snow, or if I spent a lot of time driving on roads that have real weather uh, and where the roads are not maintained well. Um, I have a friend who lives in Mexico who drives one of these, and he says it's the best thing ever. Uh, My friend Larry Chen, a famous photographer, uh, covers all kinds of events all over the western half of the United States, on-road, off-road, racing, rally, and he drives a Land Cruiser, and he takes that thing anywhere, and it, and it gets him where it needs to go. You know, if you needed, if you wanted to have a one-car household where your SUV was pretty capable but also was really tuned for street driving, Land Cruiser's not for you. That's the, that's the wrong vehicle. We're going to go to the right side here. It's a little more challenging than the left. Um, but if you have a two-car household where you could have a sports car, a fun car, and then also a comfortable, practical, reliable truck. Oh, this is this is going to be right at home in your garage. You know, if you need if you need something to carry people in comfort and and reasonable luxury, you know, to the slopes or to the farm or to the oh, here we go, to the hunting grounds. Oh, that was good. Good straddle there. I thought it might high center, but it did not. Go through this little boulder field here. I forget which one of these is hardest, but I'm pretty sure if I go up the right and stay to the left, that that's challenging. I can't remember everything about every trail, but this seems like it's going to make the Land Cruiser do some work here. Possibly more than just some work. I'm going to go up the left side. Oh, this is... Oh, here we go. Go! Go! Oh, yeah. Come on, up this wall. Up the wall. Go! Come on! <laughs> Go! Oh wow, I just smashed the throttle and it actually got up it. Okay, this is this is <laughs> this is a challenge. This is where we're making it work. You're a Subaru Outback is not getting up this. I'm sorry. It's just not. We'll go to the state of the left. There's some sharp stuff, but yes! Wow, that was nice. That was very good. Up that tough section. I thought it might, it might get stuck and die there, but it did not. It was very good. I mean, and, and let's talk for a second about how isolating this cabin is. There's no rattles, um, and nor should there be, but, but it's tight, really tight, really well insulated from outside. Um, I was driving a, a Porsche 911 Targa all week, and then getting into this, my, my reaction to this immediately was like, wow, so quiet. Uh, same thing with the powertrain. Old school V8 engine, uh, you know, Toyota Lexus product, so smooth, so quiet, no vibrations. I mean, n- you know, no vibrations in the cabin from the engine. You're totally, totally isolated. Let's go up the right side. This side right here, this is like driving on the moon. This is really sharp and craggy uh, sandstone and looks like lava rock almost but yeah this is work that's not that's not for just any vehicle there and then we'll come down and we'll go up these rocks I'm trying to I'm legitimately trying to pick like the hardest reasonable line I mean there's there are straight up holes I can't drive through but but I'm trying where possible to get this thing to do some things. It's a great trail. I mean, I really enjoy this trail. The view from the top is really good. Great place for a picnic. And you can drive, you drive up and over the mountain down the other side. That's fun. You're not just going up and then back down. You're crossing over. There's so many lights on the dash. It's not broken. Oh, wait, what did it say? Multi-terrain select, mud and sand. Is that not right? 
Oh, loose rock. Oh, you know what? I was in mud and sand. I'm going to switch to rock and dirt. I didn't have the right terrain setting on. I mean, obviously it didn't keep us from from going up, but when you've got all these settings, sometimes you got to like slow down. Are you in the right setting? Because if you're not, you're not optimized. My wife, who was driving this vehicle for a couple days, had some observations, mainly about the multimedia system, which she did not like. Scrolling through uh, radio stations and XM stations is not good. It's just, it's old school, and it's, it, it, the, the connectivity. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh-oh. That camera has just died. I don't know if it died from heat or battery. Oh, no. And I've gotten stuck. Go, go. Uh. Uh. Oh, Jesus. I don't know if I can get up that. I don't know if I can get up this. I think I need to, I actually think I need to reverse down over here. Uh. That was, that was two wheels in the air. What I'm doing right now is a little sketchy, but I'm actually just trying to get, I, I legit don't think I can make it up that side. Um, it looked very, very hairy, but this side, I'm pretty sure I can. This side is, okay, yeah, here we go, all right. Yeah, I think I might've pushed it too far on that other side, oh God, big hole, big hole. Oh, straddled it. Nice. I can hear it. You hear it? Can you hear the creaking? That's, that, that's, it's playing with brake vectoring. It's moving, it's moving power around by using the brakes and the ABS system. You can hear it ticking. Tick, 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 tick. Woo! I got a little sweaty there because I got a little sketchy there. <laughs> That one, um, oh, well, that camera has died. Have you died? You've not died. All right, well, look. <laughs> I killed the in-car camera from the heat. Uh, when these cameras are on the windshield for a long time, they get very hot. We are uh, basically up at the top of the hill. I, uh, I, I don't, uh, there's no more hard parts, let's just say that. Um, and since I've killed a camera and I can't uh, do multiple things at once, this seems like as good a place as any to uh, end the video. The Land Cruiser is the truckiest luxury truck that you can buy. Uh, at $90,000, it's very expensive, but I think it's going to last a very long time. And I think it's going to have very good resale value. And I think that if you are not obsessed with having the newest technology and, in fact, having older uh, uh, less advanced technology may be a benefit to you. This could be an incredible piece of hardware that you could buy and use, and it will last you a very long time. So thank you to Toyota for letting me have uh, a go for a week. Um, it's, it's a fabulous vehicle. It's obviously getting on years, but the thing it is designed for, durability, luxury, simplicity, um, is, is, it's right there. It's right there. And it's fun to take off road too. So thanks to you for watching. Uh, I'm sorry about the low production quality today. It just kind of is what it is. It's not the standard. It's the exception and have a good day. Bye. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the off the record app available in the Android and iOS store, or go to off the slash TST.